Hey, I'm Michael Santos with Prison Professor. Super enthusiastic to be back with episode number three, uh, Casper Tobias. He is an inspiring guy. The links in the uh, program, uh, in, the, in the show notes, will give you links to the previous two episodes that we did. Number first episode, he spoke about going into the prison system with a five-year sentence as a juvenile and then escalating through decisions he meant to higher security prisons, but then transforming his life. Episode two, we spoke about how he acclimated to society after getting out. And in this episode, we're going to talk about this new collaboration we're beginning with Prison Professor. So welcome back, Casper. Thanks for being with us again. You got it. So, so Casper, you drove, uh, you're down, we're filming at my house right now, and you drove down. How far to get down here? It was an hour. One hour, yeah. And what Casper's going to be doing, do you even know what it is I'm going to be asking you to do for us? Uh, Other than just editing editing clips for you uh i mean that's so uh, i want to tell you kind of live um but let's kind of show this process because if you want to pursue a career in business or develop your own entrepreneurial career like casper is doing this is kind of the process of how it works so i was in new york last week and had this idea was i in new york or dc i I was like all over the country last week but it was i called you from either dc or new york told you that i wanted to meet and I asked you if I could hire you. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. And you remember what I asked you, um, what would it charge you? I told you I bought some new cameras that I don't even have to know how to use. In fact, these are the first videos we are shooting on my brand new cameras, but I bought them and I don't know how to use them. So I reached out to Casper, who's a professional, and said, hey, could I hire you to come down and spend the day with me and teach me a little bit? Do you remember what you told me how much, when I asked you how much it would cost? What did you say? Uh, well, I just told you a hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. yeah. You told me a hundred bucks <laughs> and my, uh, commitment to trying to help formerly incarcerated people. I said, no, I value <laughs> yeah. your time. It's I want to pay you more and I want you, you're driving down here. I'm going to pay you 250 bucks. So more than two and a half times what you asked for, um, because I want to really pick your brain and get some value out of the enormous intellectual property that you have created over so many years of becoming an expert. I, I mean, I, I want to touch on that because I think that's very very key to, especially for people that grow up in a certain environment, you know, especially like poverty and the sort of, the way that you look at yourself, right? Like, and the value of time and the value of what your knowledge is for something. And it's, it's very easy for, for people uh, that don't really understand what that means is that you you value your, the people that know, right, like like yourself, that's very busy, that you do a lot of things and you do a lot of stuff for people. Um, you know the value of, the, of your t- of your time and you, your time is so valuable. And so when you present, say, numbers to people and stuff like that, I it's. It's really hard for myself, right? Like I don't know where that where that line is, especially if I'm trying to do something for someone else that's doing something that's good. It's like but it's not that I'm it's you should, you know, aim to to a number for yourself that is valuable because it's really it's about the value of of your time and the value of what you know and you should never under undersell that. And I did, and but you're really good at like, and I've I've, I'm I would say that I'm learning from you not to do. I do that out in the outside world. Maybe not so much with I guess like personal relationships because it's like oh yeah I'll do I'll do this or, or whatever. Um, but well, there's a, there's a lot of things to consider, and it's not easy to do. But you you who have an investment in your own equipment, you've got an investment in your time. You've got a daughter. You've got things to do. You've got a grandmother who needs you. And, and so I recognize that, but I know that you've also got, you know, 10,000 hours that you have invested to become skillful in learning how to set up these cameras. Mm-hmm. It will take me a long time to do it. In fact, if I didn't hire you, I have this investment in cameras and I think I invested like $3,000, maybe $3,500. Shoot, I spent four thousand dollars. <laughs> now that I think about it, uh, and and they would just be sitting in the box because right. I wouldn't know what to do, and I don't even know for sure if I know what I'm going to do after you leave. But I'm going to get better, and I'm never going to ask you, as a person who is in prison or a visitor to the prison professor's episode, I'm never going to ask you to do anything that I'm not doing. I will pay money to an expert and ask him to teach me. I will, after I learn from him, I will spend time to learn the skill. 
and I will do all of this because I know that I am going to increase my own value. If I can learn how to develop the skill set that Casper has, I really think that people in prison that are thinking about developing their relationships with other business owners or people have to understand this concept of value and how do I put a price on my time. I know that I invested like $4,000 in these cameras and had I not hired you, Casper, these cameras would have been sitting in a box for a long time and that's not why I invested $4,000. I invested $4,000 because I wanted to make better quality videos so that I could reach, teach, and inspire more people who are serving time. And I knew that you had the skill set to help me do that. If I would have been fiddling with it, it might have taken me two months if I ever learned it. So bringing you down here for a day was helpful, but I also really wanted to get your story because I think you've got a great story that can help more people in jail and prison understand how they can develop their own careers. Would you be open to talking with them about what they could earn as they develop more skills if they chose photography or videography? So, yeah. So it really depends on location. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm pretty I'm pretty fortunate. On the the flip side of that, it's like really competitive. So, really depending on where you're at, like if you have a skill set that not a whole lot of people, say you're from Merced or Shasta County or somewhere, and um, you develop a skill set, you know, such as videography, um, you're going to be able to stand out. And say if you just, I don't do wedding videos, but there's a whole market for that and it makes a lot, you make a lot of money. So what? how much stuff. money is a lot of money? We're talking about guys you who are living like, on $100 a year sometimes. You can get paid $4,000 in a day for doing a wedding. You know well, what I mean? But 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 that's a little misleading, Casper, and I'm gonna okay, hold you yeah. to that because you said $4,000 for a day, so it's a day of shooting. Of shooting, yes. Then you've yes. got all of the editing, editing that you've gotta do. And how yeah. long does that, so so to do a wedding can generally, the fee then it sounds like is 2,500 to five grand, is that a rough mm-hmm. range? Yeah. And that is to say, I'm gonna record your entire wedding, I'm gonna create video for you, and you're gonna memorialize it for the rest of your life. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. And how long does it take you to edit all of the, that full day of footage okay so when i first got out of film film school i never i never did a wedding but i did events uh i particularly did not like to do that um just because it wasn't my thing um but i would again i i would undersell myself um just because i didn't know i didn't that's again you you have to like like michael said you really have to gauge okay Everything, because it's not. I said, yeah, you get four thousand dollars just to shoot the, but you're not. You're sh- maybe the prep. Maybe you have to go to that wet, or you have to go to the shooting site. You have to go where they're gonna have their wedding. You have to look at all these different angles. You have to spend time there and be like, I want to put the camera here. The sun's over here. You you have to figure all that stuff out. So that could be actually a third day added to it. So you have the day of prep, and then you have the day of shooting, and then you have the the time for editing. So. It depends. And you got something that you've left out, and that's the cost of customer acquisition, which is another very expensive proposition because you've got to invest in marketing for the business owner to call you. And you don't have, it's not like you could shoot a wedding every single day. Generally, weddings are on Saturdays. So you may only be able to work three or four days out of the month when there's a wedding. Right. And yet, so, so $4,000 seems great at the front, but at the end of the day, you've got a maximum income stream of like, Fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a month, and out of that fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a month, you may have to pay assistance. You may have to do other. Still a great living, and still, if you master the skill, the important thing to realize is if you're really good at it, nobody's going to care that you were a felon. They're going to care if you can do good work. Oh yeah, I've I've never been in a situation, especially with filming, uh, really for the the mo- most for the most part. And I, I, I don't have a story to tell you where I've been in a situation where I didn't get work because I was a felon. You would always hear that stigma is like, oh, you're a felon. It's going to be so hard for you to get a job. And I, the first job I got, I got because my brother told me he worked at a car wash when he got out of jail one time. And I was like, well, that's what I'm going to do because I won't have to worry about it. And I remember just being there for three months and being miserable. And I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Like I'm doing 12 hours of labor work all day and I'm getting paid nothing. I was like, 
I'm going to have to try to figure my way around this. Again, wiggle my way into a, another position uh, and a, at another job. And I had job, I've, I've been able to get a job at corporate, uh, corporate companies, you know, and I've never had an issue. I've even become, I was able to volunteer for my daughter's school. Um, they did the life scan. They're like, Hey, uh, this happened like a really long time. I was like, yeah, it's, that was a really long time ago. I was able to be a volunteer at a school, you know? So, you know, you, you hear that. And I think that's part of the problem is that like a lot of people hear that and then they hold on to that. So they're like limiting themselves on what they can do when they get out. Just like I limited myself on, you know, trying to go, you know, work at a car wash, even though that's, yeah, it, it worked, but I limited myself in, in what I could really do. But once I started seeing how things sort of operated, I was like, no, I, I can I can move beyond this. And then when you get your own skill set, you can, especially like filming, it's like everybody has tattoos. Everybody has tattoos nowadays. Before that was the thing. I have a, a face tattoo and that's like, I feel like that's kind of common now. So it's like, that is never the excuse. And that should never be the excuse is that this is the way that it is because there's always going to be a way to navigate around a situation. And I think having that sort of mentality will get you really far. If you're like, I'm just not going to accept no. And if it's no here, then I'm going to try to go over here. And it's never resorting back to, man, things are just not working out. I'm going to go do this thing that could potentially put me in jail again and well it's important to recognize that that you know life is about being in in freedom and about having the liberty to do what you want when you want if you want to find a job there's nothing wrong with that there are great i know a lot of people that have built very successful lives in having a job working for somebody else but it's important to realize you're coming into a world where some people will face challenges and we want to show people how you can become something more. If you're watching this video inside of a jail or a prison, just think about the complexities that had to happen for, for, for the administrators to bring a formerly incarcerated guy who did 26 years into jails and prisons and say, hey, I'm going to profile other formerly incarcerated people who served time in jail and prison because I want guys inside to realize you can become something more. But that requires you to do, make the decisions that Casper taught us about. And that is reject the criminal lifestyle, focus on the success that you want to become, participate in the right courses, learn to transform your mind, and understand that there are going to be challenges and complications. In this video, we I want to let you know, Casper, what the reason that I was willing to say, hey, I want to pay you and I want you to come down, I want you to talk about it because I am a, a big believer that formerly incarcerated people do have a challenge getting out of jail and I wanna help more of them and I know that you can help me do that. So, I, but I don't have the time to do everything. I can't write the content, film the videos, edit the videos, publish the videos and still run my other businesses. So what I'd really like to be able to do with you today is I want you, you've already shown me a little bit about what these cameras can do. After we film, finish filming these videos, I want you to teach me the process of saying, okay, what's a good workflow? After I've done this, I take the cards out. We're filming just so that they can see on little cards like this. This is like a well, the equivalent when I went to prison, maybe of a cassette tape. I don't know if you was like, well, a cassette, <laughs> cassette tape. or an eight track tape, yeah. right? We're filming on some of these little cards uh -huh. and then we're going to plug them into my big computer here and I'm going to show Casper my process. But my goal will be to take the video footage, put it on the computer, load it into what's called the cloud and have Casper be able to access it from your home or wherever you are. And then I want you to take this raw footage and turn that into a finished video. So you're gonna see cuts now. He's gonna, we're going to make from him to the camera on me to you see me over here. I'm looking at Casper now. Sometimes I'm looking at you. He's gonna to have to go through all this footage and make this series of three videos. Um, but that is a process that comes with a fee. And we don't know what that fee is right now so that we wanted to test it. Castro's going to work through the flow and he's going to tell me, hey, this is what I think it's going to cost me. And then I'm going to have to do my job 
And that's going to be go out into the marketplace and find corporate sponsors to say, hey, I'm trying to get more formerly incarcerated people income opportunities so that we can create digital content to teach guys inside of, and women inside of jails and prisons how to prepare their own income streams. And I'm super enthusiastic about doing that. I'm really grateful that you are, uh, uh, for, I'm really grateful to you, Casper, for because I know that you've, your time is in high demand and yet you took the time off when you've got family obligations to come down here. I know I'm paying you a little bit, but but I think you're worth a lot more than that. And uh, and I'm very grateful to you for, for doing this, uh, investing the time to come down and help me. And, and I hope that we can work together because if we do, we're not only going to be able to teach people in jail and prison a little bit about photography, just exposing them to the business model that they can make money from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to tell them about how editing works. We're going to teach them, I'll teach them about business, about the stock market, about the real estate market, about launching a business. I'm going to create all these videos and I'm going to load them into the cloud. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to give it back to us in the right format and we're going to pipe these into prisons every single day. Sound that's, cool? Oh, that's amazing, yeah. Well, it can't happen yeah. without you. So, yeah. so I kind of put you on the spot, getting you on camera and saying, I want to do it. I want to, I want to, I hope that your brother, where is your brother right now? Uh, he's in Ironwood. Ironwood. So yeah. we go into Ironwood and he'll be able to see these episodes. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Oh, You've yeah. got to give him a message. Please do so. What's up, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's part of the prison professors program. We're also going into right now we're in Washington state prisons, every California department of corrections, uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons, Mecklenburg County Jail, um, and just piping it all across the country through these tablets like JPEG and Edovo. And uh, that's why I need your help so that we can record more content. Our goal is to put new content up every single day. It's going to take us some while to get up to speed because we've also got to do the captions for the hearing impaired so that they can read. Uh, and, and I'm going to trust that you're going to teach me how to do that. So that's what our, our third episode is. I think we've got to kind of break right now, but we can certainly do it again, a follow-up later after we get this thing rolling. And we'll let you know if you've got an ability to communicate with us. I'd encourage you to have your family members visit us at prisonprofessors.com. Um, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you've got a question, you know, team at prisonprofessors.com. If you have an ability to get email, I do want to let you know I get... You know, like more mail than I can possibly respond to um, from people. And I mean, there's more than 100,000 people go through this program. So I, I, I can't keep up with all the mail, but I do every week produce a video where I'm reading the letters out loud and giving some comments. But forgive me if I can't write to everybody. I just don't have the bandwidth, but we do have books and courses to help as many people as possible. And I love to profile stories like Casper's, who uh, would have been an inspiration to me when I was serving 26 years. And I want you to know you're an inspiration to me right now. So thanks Same. so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Sweet. Yeah. So I'm um, Michael with Prison Professors. We want to thank you for being a part of our program. This is our first episode on the Canon 90D, EO5 90D. And now I'm going to have to block this episode and take a lesson on what do I do with this stuff? So <laughs> thanks so much. We'll be back soon with another episode on the Prison Professor's uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.